Welcome back. This time on Sponge and Works, I'll show you how I finished the woodwork for this metal frame bookshelf, featuring rustic shelf edge banding and drawer fronts. Join me. Hi, I'm Sean Rubino. Welcome to Sponge and Works. In part one of this build, I'll show you how I made the construction for this bookshelf unit. Now it's time to complete the build by making the shelves and the drawers. I'll also show you how I made my own stain to darken the maple plywood to match the rustic edge banding and the drawer fronts. Also how I textured them to match an aged look. Let's start with the shelves. I'm using American-made maple plywood for the shelves. But before I can cut them the size of the table side, I need to break them down into manageable size with a circular saw and cutting guide. You can easily make one to fit your saw in this video link. Once the plywood is easy to handle, I move to the table saw and cut the sheets to final size to prepare the edge for banding. I cut 12 shelves all together as I have two shelf units to make. To add length to the shelves, I attach strips of the reclaimed wood to the ends using glue and 2 inch brad nails. Then the front edge banding is added in the same manner. With the shelves drying, it's a good time to talk about how the drawers fit. First, the drawers slide on this web frame. It's been finished and waxed, so they slide very smoothly. The drawers are made to be pulled out so they can be taken from one place to another and then replaced, sort of like baskets. While the shelves are drying, I begin making the drawer boxes. I have eight boxes to make. I'm making them using rabbits to fit the boxes together. The Inker miter gauge makes short work of cutting the rabbits. The bottoms are cut from quarter inch birch plywood. Be sure to measure the inside dimension of the boxes and add half inch to the length and width to accommodate the quarter inch grooves. To make cleanup easier, I finish the insides of the drawers before assembly. Be careful not to get finish into the rabbits as glue will not adhere to the finish. Then it's time to assemble the drawers. Once the glue is dry, it is easily popped off with a chisel. To reinforce the drawers, I use bamboo skewers to pin the sides to the front. When the glue is dry, I cut the pins flush and sand the sides to 220 grit. For a more industrial look, you can use cut nails or even screws. To clean up the shelves, I plane the top of the edge banding to match the sides. I use a block plane as I feel I have better control. To match the look and feel of the aged shelf fronts, I use a propane torch to burn the surface of the wood. The softer growth rings burn faster than the harder rings, and I use a wire wheel and a cordless drill to remove the burnt material. The result is a smooth and textured surface to mimic the naturally aged wood. Now that the shelves are complete, it's time to make the stain. I made a stain called iron acetate. It's steel wool that's been dissolved in apple cider vinegar. If you're going to use this, make sure you give yourself plenty of time to make the solution, 
as it takes several weeks to dissolve the steel wool. There is a step that needs to be done before applying the stain to the surface of the plywood. Maple has very little tannins in it, so you need to introduce some tannins. So excuse me while I go brew some tea. The tea is wiped onto the surface of the shelves and allowed to dry. Once the surface is dry, the iron acetate is brushed on and you can see how the color changes from light maple to deep gray and ultimately to grayish brown, blending with the reclaimed wood. The surfaces are then sanded with 220 grit paper, vacuumed, and then a waterborne finish is sprayed on. This is done on all of the shelves. Each drawer front is placed and individually measured until the fit is good. Then a spacer strip is used to add an even space between each drawer. To make the handles for the drawers, I first attach the fronts to the drawer boxes using screws to mark the position, measure a center line, then back the screws out. A cutting template is attached with double-sided tape and the waste is removed at the bandsaw to make work at the router table easier. Using a 3 quarter inch pattern bit, I copy the handle template to the drawer front. Back at the bench, I hold the finished front to the drawer and trace the holdout line and use the torch to char the surface. This is done for the four double drawers, as I only want to add the illusion of two separate drawers. Then glue is applied to the fronts. They're clamped and screwed back into place. This is done on all four of the bottom drawers. There's one more element to add to the drawer fronts. The handles that were routed and the tops that were cut reveal fresh wood, so I need to texture them to match the drawer fronts. Using the torch one last time, I burn the tops and handles to smooth and texture the drawers to match the fronts. Now it's time to spray on the finish. When the finish is dry, I give the drawers one final sanding with 320 grit paper, and it's time to put the unit together for the first time to have a look at all the hard work. The resulting bookshelf is a perfect addition to the industrial style furniture in a home. The patinated metal surface and the bolt head accents paired with the reclaimed wood's color and texture give a unique element to this piece. I hope you enjoyed this project as much as I did. Thanks for watching. I'm Sean Rabino. I'll see you next time on Spongin Works. 
to keep up with current projects, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And for even more news and projects, go to spongeandworks.com. Thanks for watching.